Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our FA18C Hornet and we're going to be doing automatic direction finding navigation. So the primary method of navigation in the Hornet is INS, inertial navigation system. This is your tactical navigation, your waypoints, your attack waypoints uh, and stuff like that that you use. The next mode is the uh, TACAM, uh, tactical air navigation, although it's called tactical air navigation, I call it more a general use navigation find the airports and carriers and stuff like that. Third, you've got your ICLS, which is your ILS for the carrier. And fourth, you've got your ADF, Automatic Direction Finding. Now, this is for, again, uh, I guess I'll call it general navigation. It's for navigating between beacons, radio beacons is what it's for. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, um, I've done lots of videos, ADF videos, with other planes in the Caucasus. Now, the thing about the Caucasus is the radio transmitters are in the form of NDBs, non-directional beacons. And I'm in Persian Gulf here, and I can show you an NDB. Here's one. It's in the kilohertz range, and it has some information after it. Now, basically, it's a constantly tra omnidirectional transmitting radio station, it's sending radio signals out with information coded on them in all directions and it allows aircraft to basically passively seek that signal and give them a direction to that NDB. Uh, so for instance if I was stuck out here and I had no visibility and I needed to navigate to this airbase I could navigate to that uh, that NDB. Now the successor to the NDB is the VOR and remind me what that is Riddle, the, uh, the pronunciation of it. Very high frequency omnidirectional range. Very high frequency omnidirectional range. Now Riddle is a real pilot as you know and I'm not so he knows more stuff than me. Now this, um, the VOR is, it can give you a direction to it like the NDB can except it can also give you a range by the method that it works, that we won't explain today, but just accept that, that it does. It's also got information coded on the radio. Uh, now these work in the megahertz range rather than the kilohertz. Now, so these can, what I'm just trying to say is that these can give you a direction and a range to them. Now that only works if the aircraft that's seeking it has the necessary equipment to work the VOR. The FA-18C Hornet, Naval Hornet, as far as we're aware, does not have that function on board. So it can only use this uh, VOR like an NDB and only get a direction to it. Okay, again, as ever, we stand to be corrected, but in our investigations of the Hornet, that's how it works. So we've got this VOR here that we're going to use as an NDB for navigation. We're going to go through that shortly. Secondly, we've also got, uh, and that's in the uh, VHF AM, uh, so VHF band in the AM modulation, 112.30 megahertz AM. The code here is SHJ, which we'll look at a little bit later. Our second target is going to be this dude. He is a stranded Abrams. His engine is broken down. He's out in the middle of the desert. We need to uh, hope in on him. He is transmitting on 31 megahertz. Uh, so this guy is in FM, so the VHF, but is in the FM modulation. And he's, he's powering at 50 watts. And he's shouting this wave file off of my hard disk on loop. That's how we're going to find him. So we're going to first going to home into this VOR. Then we're going to home into this tank. Um, and that is going to show off the use of the ADF in the Hornet. So the uh, next thing we're going to we're going to use the manual mode to uh, select the frequencies. Next thing we're going to do is save up and jump into the game. Okay, we're in the cockpit now. Now the first thing we do need to do is set up our radio. We can use radio 1 here or radio 2. We're just going to use radio 1. We're going to scroll here to M for manual. Now we're going to type in our manual code. If we look at my notes, that VOR is 112.30 MHz VHF. So uh, I'm pause 112300 and we are and we are now at home and we are now um, tuned into that station. The reason we know that we're tuned into the station is you can hear that beeping. That beeping is Morse code, which is coded onto the radio signals from the VOR. That Morse code there is allowing us to check whether we've honed into the right station or tuned into the right station. Now, you notice the code from earlier of this VOR station was Sierra Hotel Julia. We need, now need to go into Google or whatever your preferred search engine is. I apologize, I won't be able to show you this in the background. Right, I'm in Google, I'm going to convert Morse code. Okay, Morse code translator. I'm gonna type in here, uh, S-J-H-J and translate. And so the code for SJH is dot, 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 space, dot, 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 space, dot, dash, dash, dash. Now we've got to go back to our uh, cockpit and we're going to listen now for those, that Morse code, check that we've got the right station. So listen very carefully. So 
So what we had there was dot 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 break dot 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 break dot dash 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 and that is correct. It is the correct one. It's S J H J. So we we are tuned into the right station. The next thing to do is comp uh, display it to our, us on our HSI. So left EDI menu menu again HSI. Now our button to turn the AD off on is here. We've got option one, off or two. If we have it on one, it's using radio one. On two, it's using radio two and off, it's off. So we're gonna turn it to one with a right click. What we can see is on the HSI, we've now been given a azimuth. It is that little circle there. So what we've got to do is head towards that circle. Now remember, because we don't have VOR ranging equipment in the Hornet, we can't get a range, but we can get an azimuth. So we're gonna turn onto that vector. For some reason our anti-squelch has turned itself off. Interestingly, uh, the squelch has turned itself off, that's why we're getting that horrible hiss and we can't turn it back on. I think that's a bug, just ignore it for now. With regards to radio compasses, this is basically a digital version of a radio, radio compass needle. And radio compasses are a little temperamental, um, they're, they're quite good in the Hornet, but just be advised that they can get a bit of temperamental in other planes. So we've got it on a 12 o'clock position now. We're just going to keep that there until we get over the VOR. Now, what will happen is once we get over the VOR, um, we'll have no sign that we're over it, except for the uh, the marker there, the circle, will basically all of a sudden twist around behind us. That's how we know we're over the VOR. That's the only way we've got to know. And we're getting mighty close to the station now. It's starting to move around our compass rows here. Uh, uh, the more it moves about, the closer you're getting to the station. That's the best we've got regards range. Whoops, we're stalling. That's silly. And there it goes. You can see it's moving and it's going to swing violently around to the left now. And that shows that we are now over the station. And now it's behind us. Simple as that. So that shows how we can home into a VOR. Now we can't home into the uh, NDBs, the non-directional beacons, because they are on a kilohertz range and our radio does not work in the kilohertz range because that's just prehistoric. Next we're going to home into our tank in distress. So first of all we're going to tune in to his signals. So we've got, got the radio. We're going to turn it to type a signal in 31000 enter. Now if you listen very carefully you can hear some shouting over this again the squelch appears to be bugged and broken but if you listen you can hear a signal of a guy shouting and that is the tank commander shouting that wave file at me and again we've got a new direction here so this is not a VOR this time this is a FM VHF FM signal from a tank so there is no way that we can get a uh, range to this because it's a passive signal in this case a passive single radio signal and we can only get the azimuth basically but essentially it's going to work the same as we did with the VOR now we're just going to head towards the circle and when it spins around we're above it You'll notice that the radio compass signal changes a bit when I roll. That's the same with all aircraft. So you have to get flat and level for the signal to work properly. Okay, we're on signal now. Now we're going to go uh, low down and see if we can see him. There he is. I see him, I see him, I see him. He's, yep, he's right ahead, so it's guided us straight to him. Again, once we go over the top of him, you'll see the needle spin round, and that's how we know we're above him. There we go. There it is. So that's uh, ADF navigation in the Hornets. So just to recap, we've tuned into a VRR station on VHF uh, AM modulation, and then we've uh, done uh, honed into a tank on VHF in the FM modulation. Uh, the only thing to point out, that horrible squelch sound there, that was just a bug that won't normally do that when uh, you're using ADF in the Hornet. Uh, nothing else to say on that. I hope it helps, and I'll see you later.